Hello everyone, thanks very much for joining me. So in this video I want to talk about a music concert film and one which I think is really important and really underseen. Um, it only has 31 reviews on IMDB and four on Letterboxd. Uh, it's criminally underseen, um, but that said, it doesn't really exist in a particularly good format to view it. Um, but it's a hugely important film. I think it's just as important as, say, Criterion releases, such as the Maisel's film of um, the Rolling Stones concert at Altamont in 1969, Gimme Shelter, or even the Soul Power concert that features uh, from 1974 and it's included on the When We Were Kings disc. But the film I want to talk about, it's called Sing Sing Thanksgiving. Uh, and I actually managed to find it in a DVD um, here called Live at Sing Sing. Uh, fairly innocuous looking DVD, just makes it look like a, a fairly uh, sort of standard kind of concert video. But oh no, this is definitely not your standard concert video. This is a very, very significant film uh, and I'll explain why. Um, now I'm going to put links below to the documentary filmmaker who made this film. His name is David Hoffman. Um, he has a YouTube channel and his website as well. Uh, the gentleman's uh, now in his 80s, and, uh, he, but he has spent a long time working in filmmaking, starting in the 60s and doing uh, work for uh, National Educational TV as well as PBS. He's, he's produced a lot of documentaries. Um, but yeah, what is really, really fascinating about Sing Sing Thanksgiving is that it's films inside a prison, Sing Sing Prison. Sing Sing Prison is uh, upstate from New York in a place called Osining, about 30 miles north of New York. Um, and yeah, the timing of this concert is just really, really interesting. Uh, it was made in 1972, I believe, uh, for Thanksgiving. Um, and this is about a year after all of the uh, riots and uprising at Attica prison, a very famous uh, uprising there. Um, and you'll perhaps remember Al Pacino screaming Attica, Attica in Dog Day Afternoon. Um, but yeah, so as a result of the Attica uprising, uh, the filmmaker David Hoffman uh, was uh, emotional about that and wanted to use his uh, documentary skills in a, a helpful and productive way it seems and so he was able to actually uh, contact the prison wardens at uh, Sing Sing prison because he was actually living fairly nearby there and uh, initially he made his way in there it seems to actually try and do something educational there for the inmates um, to actually encourage them to use filmmaking and, uh, uh, and create stories to do some storytelling. Um, and so it seems initially that's uh, exactly what he did. He went in there and uh, was able to uh, um, start a class and actually uh, do some storytelling uh, with some uh, inmates there. Um, but then to celebrate that, if you like, at the end of uh, that period, um, he decided to try and arrange a concert for the prison inmates. This was quite an incredible thing. So 1972, um, and uh, he was able to contact uh, the manager for B.B. King, the great blues musician B.B. King. Um, and B.B. King agreed to uh, do the concert. He said he would do it for free, bring his 26-piece orchestra, uh, uh, sorry, uh, band along with him. Um, and uh, yeah, he would agree to perform there. Um, and then apparently the manager of B.B. King uh, was also at that time dealing with the up-and-coming Voices of East Harlem uh, choir and uh, they agreed to perform as well. Um, and then on top of that, uh, David Hoffman was able to contact Joan Baez. Uh, and at that time, her husband had been incarcerated as well. So she had a sort of empathy, if you like, for prisons. And so she agreed to perform there as well. Um, and so what we have is a concert that was arranged inside Sing Sing Prison. And this uh, concert film, um, is not just the concert, you're actually getting footage of the prison inmates, you're getting to see some of their living conditions, you're getting to see some of the uh, thoughts and opinions of various inmates and wardens, um, and then you actually get the concert itself. And it's an extraordinary undertaking to think that they actually brought in B.B. King on a bus with all of his crew. Um, so yeah, 26 of them or whatever it was. And then Joan Baez with her sister 
as well uh, and her crew and then the, um, the voices of East Harlem I mean there's about 20 of those so all of these people arriving at uh, Sing Sing prison as well as David Hoffman with his uh, camera crew he had about seven different camera crews uh, there to try and film uh, the various musicians as well as the inmates and uh, the wardens uh, so everyone had different jobs to do um, and then yeah this film is then the culmination of that and it is hugely hugely fascinating um, because you're getting this great great concert footage of people who are in their prime I mean BB King had been performing for about 10 years uh, he had a number of albums out um, by this time already uh, it was well established uh, Joan Baez as well um, and so we've got this fantastic uh, footage here of them performing, um, also with the uh, MC of the evening being uh, done by Jimmy Walker, who was a, um, a popular comedian at the time. And he had a show, I haven't seen the show, it was called Good Times, where uh, John Amos played his dad. Um, and also you may be familiar with seeing Jimmy Walker perhaps uh, briefly in the 1980 film Airplane. Uh, he's there in that film where he's actually, uh, uh, almost like a service uh, attendant uh, wiping the windows on the front of the plane and then sort of like lifting its hood as if he's going to do an oil change. And, um, so yeah, that's Jimmy Walker. Um, so yeah, this great, great concert footage. I mean, we've got Joan Baez uh, performing I Shall Be Released and then doing a number with her sister as well, Mima Farina. Very rare for them to perform together. Um, the great B.B. King doing um, Guess Who and Outside Help and um, what's the other one? Uh, ah, sorry, the name escapes me just uh, off the top of my head. Um, and the fantastic voices of East Harlem as well. They are really superb. They really have such great energy and uh, um, they actually get the concert you know, uh, going with a absolutely fantastic start to it they really bounce onto the stage and then just get straight into things so yeah all of this uh, fantastic music is just wonderful to see but to see it with the prison inmates interacting with them as well you've got 1200 inmates all in this room um, there's no barrier there you've got camera crew just sort of walking amongst them as well um, but yeah you're getting to see all the uh, inmates reaction to this music and uh, um, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing to see. So I really think this is a, a hugely vital film that should be um, celebrated perhaps more than it is. Uh, apparently when the film was released, it was originally intended to be shown in theatres, but then for some reason that did not happen, but it did then show on the PBS network and, uh, and was seen widely then. Um, but uh, yeah, like I say, please do follow the links below for David Hoffman, the director, um, because he uh, has uploaded various um, clips of the movie, uh, as well as uh, there are some interviews as well where he talks more about um, how he got involved with it. And it's really interesting, fascinating stuff. I would love to see this film get uh, a more wider release and a, and a restoration, if you like, because the film footage is um, quite grainy now, so it's it's not the sharpest. Um, but uh, nonetheless, what a fantastic atmosphere! Um, like I say, not just the concert fo footage as well, because you've also got these inmates who are um, performing on the stage themselves. There's a fantastically uh, interesting scene where between uh, performances some inmates come up and they actually perform their own kind of interpretation of uh, guilt if you like of being arrested and then having to uh, sort of uh, protest their innocence before finally succumbing to their uh, guilt and it's a really really interesting sort of stage performance that they give um, so yeah there is so much of interest in this film it no way is it just a simple concert film and no way does this uh, cover uh, give you any kind of idea of of what you're in for uh, you, you know quite often we come across films where you know oh it's a, a concert of so and so and you know these performers have filmed loads and loads of different uh, concerts and you think oh you know just another concert kind of thing but uh, absolutely not in this case this is one which is hugely hugely significant I think and uh, yeah definitely should be talked about more um, so yeah, I mean, um, after watching this, I actually uh, followed up with my sister because my uh, 
brother-in-law who is sadly uh, no longer with us he was uh, a, a music aficionado he certainly knew a lot about uh, reggae in particular but uh, also soul music and uh, funk and blues and uh, sure enough yeah he had in his record collection um, the album from the voices of East Harlem uh, right on be free um, and I'll just show some pictures of uh, what my sister was able to send me um, but wow they are just absolutely incredible to watch I, I really really loved seeing them um, but uh, yeah and BB King is uh, if you like special to me um, when I was only a teenager I was listening to blues and I was fortunate to be able to see BB King a few times um, this is actually a uh, a little sort of um, what you call it the uh, program that uh, you get with concerts and this would have been from the late 80s it's going to be sometime after 1985 when I saw him uh, I've seen him a few times but I'm just a bit fuzzy on the dates but uh, yeah here he is this would have been I guess around 1987 ish uh, in the UK um, but yeah the great BB King such a wonderful wonderful uh, performer um, incredible talent uh, Paul Johnson there as his uh, support act on that particular concert but yeah the great BB King um, so yeah that's me waffling on a little bit there but uh, like I say please do check out more from David Hoffman himself on his channel um, and yeah see if you can look out for this film like I say uh, if you're if you're interested in documentaries or if you're interested in um, music um, then I'm sure this will be of great interest to you um, I found it absolutely fascinating I'm so pleased I've discovered it um, uh, belatedly I mean obviously we're 50 years now after the actual event itself um, but yeah, this film definitely should be known more widely. Um, so please do check it out. Um, thanks very much for your patience listening to me uh, burble on about this. Um, yeah, join me again for some more videos. Please like, subscribe, do all that kind of fun stuff. And I will see you again. Thank you. Bye-bye.